Thank you for turning to page 121. Today we're going to take a look at an excellent spell, second level MU, out of the player's handbook, Rope Trick. This is a really good utility spell. You're not going to do any damage with this spell, but you're going to be able to hide and maybe strike from hiding. It's a really good spell. We'll take a, a deep look at it today. Also, just a quick note, subscribers, please. I want to keep the channel growing. It's been growing nicely. Let's continue that. I appreciate it. Also, uh, please take a look at the Patreon. And if there's anything you can do to help out there, that would be great. Back to the important stuff. Today, second level MU spell from the player's handbook. Rope trick. Rope trick. What a neat spell. But first I want to show WizKids put this out a few years ago. The rope itself doesn't stand very tall, but it's a rope trick spell symbol. I really liked this. I grabbed it as soon as I could. So there you have it. Now, taking a look at the spell itself. Very good utility spell. Uh, I did a video oh, a year or so ago about uh, utility spells, or second level spells. Because when I first started D&D, I thought the second level spell list was poor. And then as I got to be a, a more skilled DM and player, I realized how wrong I was. But today we're going to take a look at Rope Trick. It's a level 2 spell. It's an alteration. Range is touch. Duration is 2 turns per level. Area of effect is special. Verbal, somatic, and material components. 2 segment casting time and no saving throw. When this spell is cast upon a piece of rope from 5 feet to 30 feet in length, one end of the rope rises into the air until the hole is hanging perpendicular as if affixed to the upper end. The upper end is in fact fastened in an extra dimensional space. And the spellcaster and up to five others can climb up the rope and disappear into the space into a place of safety where no creature can find them. The rope cannot be taken into the dimensional space if six people have climbed up. Otherwise, it can be pulled up. Uh, the, uh, if not, the rope simply hangs in the air and will stay there unless removed by some creature. The persons in the extra, extra dimensional space must climb down the rope prior to the expiration of the spell duration or else they are dropped from the height to which they originally climbed when the effect of the spell wears out. The rope can be climbed only by one person at a time. Note that the rope trick spell allows climbers to reach the normal place if they do not climb all the way into the rope's extra-dimensional space. The material components of this spell are powdered corn extract and a twisted loop of parchment. So basically what it's saying at the end there is if you wanted to climb a 25-foot high wall but had no grapnel or any way to attach a rope, you could simply... Uh, cast a rope trick next to the wall, climb the 25 feet of the wall without going into the rope trick, and then over you go. The rope is still hanging down, so it might be seen, but other people can follow you. And by the way, as many people as could climb that rope in the two turns per level casting time. For purposes of today's video, I think I'm going to go with six level as the caster, so two turns per level would be 12 turns, or two hours. Uh, so a lot of good stuff about this spell. You get to climb up into a, an extra-dimensional space. Uh, the extra-dimensional space is completely uh, safe from discovery. By the way, I don't allow scrying to find you since you're no longer on our plane. You uh, have moved to another plane, so scrying will not find you unless the scryer has the ability to scry across planes. So that's good way, one good way to hide from scrying. Um, but this spell is really good for... Uh, using it to spy yourself. If you want to find out something, you, you could cast this spell, climb up into the space, pull the rope up after you, and then just sit there out the little window that you can see out the bottom and uh, see what's going on down there. Now, we house rule that this spell does have kind of a transparent floor to it. Uh, when you pull the rope up in it, if there are only five people in it, we house rule that you can see out of it. It doesn't expressly state that here, but uh, we always kind of just interpreted that because uh, there's not a ton of use otherwise. So we do allow you to see out the bottom and the bottom only of the spell. So depending on how high up you've cast it, if you cast it five feet, it's easy to climb up in there, but you can only see the five feet directly beneath the spell. If you climb up 30 feet, you get a much broader window to look down on a room and, and see the spell. So that's just how we've done it. Uh, I, I agree if, if some people say, no, you can't see out the bottom, you, you can't hear, it's an extra-dimensional space, 
you want to see something, you got to stick your face out. That's fine. I have no issue with that. And that's certainly more in line with what the spell says. I'm just saying how we play it at my table, which allows you to see out the bottom. Because when you can see out the bottom, you can do different little tricks like shoot a magic missile. Magic missile is line of sight. If I'm in another dimension, which I am in the rope trick, but I can push my hand through easily through the bottom of the uh, rope trick without coming out of the rope trick itself, I could easily cast a magic missile spell, extend my finger down there, my hand down there, fire the magic missile at somebody in the room. We've used this to start fights amongst orcs and stuff. You know, Three Stooges style. You, you shoot a, an orc with one magic missile and he jumps and says, hey, why'd you hit me? And the next thing you know, the orcs are fighting. Um, we've also used it for fireball. Uh, you cast the fireball spell. As the fireball is ready to go, you put your hand out. You fire the fireball, pull your hand back immediately. I don't worry about the hand getting back in time. I allow it. The fireball detonates and engulfs everyone within the 40-foot area, including the rope trick. But the rope trick's in non-dimensional space, so you're fine. So we have cleared rooms with fireballs like that. Also crossbow. You stick a crossbow out and you can fire it that way. Uh, firing a bow is a lot trickier because you kind of have to lay on your belly the way we interpret it and stick the bow and the arrow itself out in order to get the shot. So that's that's a lot more hazardous. Uh, as far as entering the non-dimensional space, we will allow you to levitate or fly up to the dimension, the space, but you must touch the rope as you enter the dimensional space. I know it says expressly in the spell you have to climb it, but I don't see any reason why you couldn't levitate holding your, the rope in your hand and paying it hand over hand as you go up. That is a form of climbing, arguably, and uh, simply going to the non-dimensional space that way. And, of course, flight much the same way. So we don't allow you to just zoom straight into the place. You have to basically stop and, and climb up, you know, touch the rope and get into the area. We also only allow one person in or one person out per round. And if there are... Five of you or less in there, you can pull the rope up. If there are six or more, the rope has to dangle down. Or, I'm sorry, six, the rope has to dangle down. You can't have more than six up there at one time. I ran a game years ago where the group was being pursued by orcs. And uh, this is a, probably a about a third to fourth level group, and there were a lot of orcs. And the, the players had kind of run through the dungeon, and they'd found a, a room, and they ducked into the room real quick. Uh, rather hazardously, but there's nothing in the room. Quickly cast the rope trick spell, which is only two segment casting time. And then, granted, it took a few rounds. There were four players in the party, so it took four rounds for them to all get up the rope, but they made it. So they're up in this, this non dimensional space and they're hiding from the orcs that they really weren't in a situation to defeat. They'd expended a lot of their magic already and they were in, in pretty weak state. The magic user in this case, I believe, was fourth level which would be eight turns or 80 minutes, so just under an hour and a half up in the rope trick. So they're fine. They were safe, except the orcs stayed in the room. They, uh, I kind of thought of this uh, as they were saying what they were going to do, and I thought, well, this would be an interesting thing for them to deal with. They've got about an hour and a half to figure out something, but there's still going to be, you know, 20 orcs down there they're going to have to deal with, and they have no mass killing spells, no sleep spells, no nothing. So the players were kind of stuck and were sweating it. And then one of the magic users realized he had a scroll. And on the scroll was a sleep spell. They were able to cast that. They otherwise got ready. They had some flaming oil ready and things like that. So they otherwise were ready for a quick assault on the orcs. So it ended up working out well for them. But it did scare them for a bit. And I made them think before they, they acted. They couldn't just jump down out of the, the rope trick and go on their way. So that's just a couple of uses for rope trick. Uh, hiding place, definitely. A sniping place, the way we use it, definitely. A way to climb over a wall when you can't affix a line, very good way to do it. Uh, and that, that's it. Even at upper levels, when you get to 8th, 10th level, this spell ha still has a lot of utility. Uh, especially if you're 10th level, for instance, at 2 turns per level, that's 20 turns. That's uh, 3 hours and 20 minutes of uh, resting time if you need it. So it can be a, a secure place for you to rest. So that's it. Let me know your thoughts on Rope Trick, one of my favorite utility spells. Uh, I, I've enjoyed it since <laughs> very early in D&D. &D. And uh, yeah, definitely a, a good second level spell that I, I kind of overlooked when I first read the second level spells, but quickly came to appreciate. So that's what I've got to say today on page 121. 
Thank you for your time. Thanks for watching. Please leave any comments below, and I'll see you next time.